Hi, I'm Michael Stilwell, and in the next seven or so minutes, I'm going to take you through some of the ways to test Wear 3 health and fitness apps without breaking a sweat. So imagine it's your job to test a scenario like this. Start tracking a run, run up a hill, run down a hill, and then, after 30 minutes, stop running. Not so straightforward, is it? You get sweaty, it takes a lot of time, it's not easily repeatable, and taking bug reports and screenshots while running is a pain. And how do you check the UI remains smooth while in the middle of a run? There's also a few other reasons testing is difficult for apps like this. Compared to phones, watches have more input types, so there's a screen, but also around 10 sensors. But not all watches have the same collection of sensors. And even if they do, they can have different capabilities. So for example, some watches can automatically pause and exercise if it looks like you've stopped moving, but others don't. Also, there's some variation in how frequently data is delivered to the app. So even if data is being recorded continuously, it will typically be delivered in batches, and the size and timing of the batches will vary from one device to another. One final difficulty is that there's a few unusual states and transitions the watch can make that are difficult to produce, such as your app losing permissions. So there's two broad options for simulating different activities on different devices. You can use an emulator, or you can use an ADB-powered command line API. The emulator works just like the phone emulator and is especially useful for testing UI on different screen sizes. You can also pair an emulated watch to a physical phone, or even an emulated phone. The other approach is to use health services synthetic mode. And this works with both emulated and real devices. So here's a quick tour of the emulator. It's accessed via the device manager panel in Android Studio, and you can use it to provide fake or simulated heart rate sensor data. The emulator is also useful for testing how your app works on different screen sizes and shapes, including shapes that are not available on physical devices. Another thing you'll probably want to do at some point is pair the emulated device to a real phone to get a Google account onto the device. And this process has got a lot easier over the last few months. Next up, synthetic mode. So the emulator can only generate fake events for the heart rate sensor. However, synthetic mode simulates the behavior of multiple sensors at the same time. To get this working, pick an exercise type and tell health services to simulate that exercise. Health services will generate synthetic exercise data across multiple sensors. To communicate with the health services library, you need to have ADB configured. You may have set this up already, but let's just quickly go through your options, since it's different to how you might do it on a phone. Since watches don't have data cables, for Wear 3 devices, the only other option is Wi-Fi. This works pretty much as you'd expect, although some devices consume a lot of power with Wi-Fi debugging turned on. So remember to turn it off when you're finished. If you're on a network that isolates clients from each other, I recommend setting up a Wi-Fi hotspot on your phone and connecting both your computer and your watch to your phone. This will allow your computer to communicate with your watch without being blocked. So now you have ADB set up, here's how to simulate an exercise. First, enable synthetic providers. Then, tell it what exercise to simulate. As soon as you issue the command, health services will generate realistic but fake sensor data for you to use to test your app. And remember to revert to the sensor providers when you're done. Different devices have different capabilities. This can affect both features, such as whether auto-pause is available or not, and also the data types you get back such as where the elevation is delivered when tracking a run. It's very important that your app checks for and correctly handles these differences between devices. Attempting to configure a device to do something it doesn't support can cause your app to crash. So here's some sample code showing how to safely create an exercise config. Note the set intersection operation that ensures only data types that are supported by the device are requested. Another common source of bugs is not handling some of the more unusual health services states properly. So typically, as your app records an exercise, the service transitions through a few different states, from preparing to active to stopped. However, there are several unusual states that are not frequently encountered that your app must still be able to handle. You should verify your app handles these states correctly by, for example, manually removing permissions or opening another app and starting recording there while your app is still running. Wear health and fitness apps typically have far fewer screens and functions than phone apps. They're usually pretty simple. 
However, they're often used in situations where users expect things to just work, where they don't have the time or patience to investigate glitches. So it's important that app quality is high, and one of the best ways to achieve this is to thoroughly test your apps. So don't skimp on testing because it seems like physical exercise is needed. As I hope this talk has shown, there's a lot of things you can test without doing physical exercise. Finally, keep checking the docs to see if new features have been added to the tooling to make testing even easier. Thanks for watching.